just got a slack line. Oh, fish on. Feels okay too. Nice. Come on, buddy. Look at that. Splish splash. Yeah. What do I got? Oh, what do you know? Ha ha ha. I got an eel. I told you, man. I told you they were here. Look at her, brother. He's happy as a kid right now. What is that? Oh my god, it is an eel. Oh, it is a nice fat female too. Look at that. Yeah, I believe that's a female. Look how big it is. Look at the size of its head. Okay, before I get at the eel, I'm going to make a brine. And yes, I have baked and brined eels before on my catch and cook videos. This video is more specifically about the brine and how to brine. I'm, I'm going to do it differently this time. I'm going to make a different brine. This is a variation of the brine that you first saw me make. That is a cup of crab boil. And that is a cup of brown sugar. We're, we got a quart and a half of water in the pan. And now we're going to put in a cup of pure maple syrup. Making more brine this time because well, I have two eel to brine, and plus, last time I did this, I made a, a quart of brine, and I I wasted it. So this time, it's about how not to waste the brine. We're not going to brine the eel in the pot like I did last time. We're going to do something different, and we're going to save the brine that is left over for the next time. Plus I want to see how uh, maple syrup and brown sugar and crab boil taste. Now I'm gonna stir this for a while and let it heat back up and boil for a bit to help it dissolve evenly. Look at that, that looks nice and beautiful. Let's give it a taste real quick. Woo! Man, that's got some kick to it. Dang. Alright, it's the next morning. Last night when I got home from uh, fishing, I was so tired after I made my brine that I just crashed hard. So these are the two eel I caught last night. They've been on ice all night. I typically do that, but you shouldn't leave uh, stuff on ice for too long without gutting them or taking their heads off overnight is okay you know it's basically the next morning so they haven't been on ice too long but keeping them on ice is what you should do if you can't get at them right away so we are going to take their heads off and clean them this is the bigger one I'm gonna cut right here There we go. And now I'm gonna gut them by starting at the, uh, the anus and go up. You could use like a, a bit of cloth if you can't hold on to them or some gloves. I am just doing it. There we go. These guts come out pretty easy. Once you, once you get them all out, you need to pick at the little things that are hanging on to the meat. You gotta get this swim bladder out. Maybe could even use that for bait right there. I'll probably just uh, throw it away. Alright, I'm going to finish cleaning my eel and then I 
am going to brine them. All right, I'm all done cleaning them and I've rinsed them and I've also made an incision along the top here. And as you can see, I've cut them in half as well. Each one has an incision along the top. This is to help take the skin off after it's baked and also to help my flavored brine get into the meat so it's nice and tasty. So <clears throat> there's a reason why I cut them in half. Here's my brine. It's been sitting in the fridge all night. It's probably even better for that. The reason why I cut these in half is because I'm going to brine them in a bag. I'm going to put the smaller uh, eel in one bag and I'll put the other, that one in another bag. Now, I'm going to use this cup to fill this bag with brine. I just want to cover the eel. I've got a coon hound wanting me to open a back door. There we go. That should be enough brine. We'll put us a little more in there. And I'm going to have that bag sit up like that in the fridge for probably overnight till it's around noon now. Getting close to it. So probably cook this for lunch tomorrow. All right. I've decided to keep what's left to use for bait in the morning. I'm going fishing again. And I'm doing this to save brine because I expect I will catch more eel in the morning and throughout the week. So I don't want to have to constantly make more and more brine every time I come home late at night or whenever. So I have it made ahead of time. That's why I made a little more and I'm trying to use just the amount I need to brine the eel that I have at the moment. So I have this left over for the next batch of eels. Okay, my eels have been brining in these bags for a little over 24 hours. So I was going to have them for lunch, but now I'm going to have them for dinner. 24 hours is typically what you would do if you were going to smoke them or if you're going to smoke salmon or anything you, that you wanted to smoke. Typically you want it to be brined for 24 hours. So there we go. Now I'm going to take them out of the bags and pat them dry. I'm making a mess. So you could use paper towels, but I don't use paper towels in my kitchen. I use towels. It's clean, so I'm just going to pat it dry. It's really wet, but I don't want to dry. I don't want to pat it dry where I have the meat exposed. I want that to stay like it is. That's where all the flavor is. And I'm going to pat it dry on the inside. I'm only going to show you one of these just so you get an idea. You want to get all that gooey stuff off. All right, there we go. It's okay if it has a bit of a sheen on it still. Just want to get all that gooey stuff off. All right, I'm going to finish patting dry the rest of my eel and then I'm going to put them on the plate. All right, so now I'm ready to put these in the oven. <clears throat> I wish I had a smoker. I, I want to get one. I would rather be smoking them, but they're really good baked. So what I've done is I've preheated my oven to 375 degrees and I'm going to put them in there for 20 to 30 minutes or at least until this skin is nice and crispy. And that's how you can tell that it's done. That skin's got to be crispy. So let's put them in the oven. Here we go. This is what I'm having with the uh, eel tonight. That is my classic blackened roast potatoes. You saw that in a previous video. I love them so much, I made them again. And there we go, they're done. Crispy too, it smells great. Look how this one opened up, you see that? This one right here, awesome. That's hot, let's get that on a plate. Here you go, it's on the plate. All right, this is something I did not make. This came from a client. It's a pinto bean salad. I wanna say thank you, Lynn, for the pinto bean salad. There's my potatoes. There's an overdose of mayo, 
That's how I like to roll. And there's my eel. Brined in maple syrup, crab boil, and brown sugar. The whole house smells wonderful right now. All right, let's put it on the table and eat. I'm starving. You see this? There's a coon hound right here. Oh, here comes shortlet. There's a, the other one short, so. Oh. <laughs> all, I'll be in circle. <laughs> it must be really good if, if the coon hound is like that. Oh, oh, I must have done a good job. She hadn't even tasted it yet. This is just that nose. The nose knows. Mmm. Well, the potatoes are good. Now, the eel does have bones in it, but... Mmm. They're easy to eat around. Oh my goodness. Wow. It is... Yeah? You can definitely... Definitely taste the sweetness of the brine. The brine was sweeter this time because it had brown. Uh -huh. Can I finish? <laughs> brown sugar and maple syrup. <laughs> so the crab oil is just packed with cayenne. Cayenne. <laughs> Come here. Come here. You big baby. So yeah, it's sweet but spicy. You can taste the maple and the brown sugar a bit more this time than the last time. Last time it was just brown sugar. And it, it really came out a lot better this time, leaving it in the brine longer. Last time it wasn't nearly 24. Dixie says 24 hours is the ticket. Here, will you be quiet, you big baby? Such a horrible beggar. Well, mmm, that's good, Lynn. That, that pinto bean salad is good. You don't get any pinto bean salad. No. All right. Mmm. We'll see you next time.